Kopiluwak, the rarest beverage in the world. Welcome to Overcrest. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. And cheers. 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 We both. Uh, there we go. We both are our coffees. We're well caffeinated. If that's what you call this, this is swill, in my opinion. This isn't my favorite. This I actually have already had a what cup is this? of my coffee. What is this? This is gas station coffee. Okay. It's fucking terrible. It's not great. Okay. Not my go-to. So, but I needed more coffee. You needed more coffee. So well, it, it's right absolutely here. terrible. Yeah. So I've I've started to explore coffee a little bit. Yes, just a little bit. And the only co- I bought my my bride a Delonghi espresso. Espresso is it? Espresso. Espresso. There's no X in. There's it. no S. It's espresso. Espresso yes. would be like a great brand though. Like if you were really fast, espresso would be the espresso. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad we. I've given my that. wife a few of those. <laughs> Uh-huh. Because you sound dumb if you say espresso. 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 So I bought her an espresso machine. Yes. And till this, this is the first actual coffee. Like a just a drip. Just like a drip coffee I've ever had. Oh. It's terrible. It's sour. It is more bitter. It's, yes. It's and not good. I will explain why. We'll get uh, there. So I've had Americano. So I have I don't make lattes with my machine. I make an Americano, right. which is which just, is just an espresso that is watered down. Watered down. Which should be very similar as far as like the uh consistency to a drip coffee. Yes. And then I had uh another espresso when I was out in California. Okay. I there was a guy that was next door to my hotel, and his name is Paul Ripke. Really interesting guy, eccentric dude, has like a clothing company and a brand and stuff like that. Has a has an old an old Porsche, and he made me an espresso there. Okay, out of like this this espresso machine that was like made out of concrete, <laughs> and he had to grind the beans, he had to tamp dude, it himself. Espresso machines can get super expensive. That one looked expensive. The uh, it was actually quite sour. Yeah, I, I think it was. It all depends. I on think the it roast. was uh, under extracted. That could be, in my opinion, it was it was very sour. I've spent a lot of time. Getting like the the grind the the grind right, which is how how fine the beans yep. are ground, and yep. then the temperature, temperature and the and, pressure. The, and the pressure. Yeah, it's funny. My machine has a, a a gauge on it. Yeah, that just says optimal pressure, and there's like so a there's range. no psi. Nah, no. I no. wonder if you could replace the gauge with an actual. Like, I would like pressure to do that. Gauge. Yeah, I would, I would like to have you like a bar. big like industrial one. Yeah, just like, like coming out of the hole, gauge. like but like yeah. bolted on, like yeah, it was modified, like, like some sort of steampunk looking yes, thing. Yes, it yeah, would be. That would actually be. I like neat. that idea a lot. Uh, so I, I do like that uh, the americano that my machine makes. Okay. So far, that's the only thing I found that I like. Okay. Because it's it it doesn't taste bitter. It doesn't taste sour. Yeah. It uh I don't really like an, an actual See, espresso because it's just too strong. Yeah, this is just crap gas station coffee. Oh, it's I awful. wish I would have brought down what I enjoy. Which is it is a Starbucks roast, which is usually a little more bitter, and they roast a little longer. Yes, but it's a light roast, right? And so I really enjoy it. That's been my favorite like drip coffee that I found, and I've tried. What is? A lot. Why would you have drip coffee when you can make an americano? Like, what? Um, what? what? Cause speed? Most people don't like, have an espresso machine. Okay. Yeah. Do, what? Don't, do you? No. Why? You make a billion dollars. Why don't you have a, an espresso <laughs> machine? Yeah, I guess maybe. You should get one. I should get like a really old, like antique, really oh, good Jesus, one. Oh, Jesus, dude. No, like, because they're, they're like most, a lot of the original ones were like Italian and they're made out of copper and like hand formed. And See, that's the like whole 10, thing. Because then you've got knobs for your pressure yeah, and everything else. Yeah. That sounds awful. That's how I should do that it. That sounds awful. Anyways. Regardless, this entire episode, you guys, is about coffee. We're going to delve into the history, but some interesting facts. Don't forget, we have Mr. Kippenberger coming That's on right, from Vehicle. Because we're also going to talk about the most expensive type of coffee in the world. In the world. And he has sent us some. And I he used has. to, I had it on my on my desk, but I put it back in the, in the, in the fridge, refrigerator cold brew. to keep it cool. Um, right. The uh, He has one bottle and one can. So the can is, they're both cold brews. Yes. And one is, I think, $20 a can. The other one is $1,000 per bottle. And I'm worried a little bit that it's going to be lost on me. Yeah, a little well, bit. I'm glad. But it won't be lost on try. you because yeah. you, you're very experienced with coffee. Uh, but we always like to help out our friends and uh, and have them on to talk about their passion projects and thing that we're doing. So Kippenberger is going to come on, talk about the process of the vehicle coffee 
that he's making. So that's awesome. All about coffee. I'm yes. still not down with the ritual, Jake. I'm really? still not down See, with the ritual. And you're right. It is a ritual because like I I can't drink like something really sweet in the morning to wake up. Like, Do you, you ever have a Danish or anything? Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Like, sweet coffee cake is delicious, but it's because it washes it down with a cup of coffee. Yeah, right? but it's still it sweet. Like a donut sweet. is sweet. So yes. it's not that you don't but like I, something sweet. No, you're right. But like a beverage, I couldn't do a Red Bull right away in the morning. Why? I it just it would seem too like too sharp. But coffee can be very sharp if you're not going to have an espresso. Sweet. With- uh, I don't know. People put a, a bunch of, of milk would, and sugar in their coffee. Right. I don't. I only drink coffee black. Okay. So you're you're a purist. I I I feel like I'm already becoming like I'm never going to try that in my coffee. Well, I feel like I'm becoming that grumpy guy already. Which is yes. Which that, is that predictable. Is, that's very true to form, right? I <laughs> yeah. would not be surprised by anything else from you. Yes. And it's interesting because you you for the longest time was like I've never had a cup of coffee, super proud about it. I don't need coffee. I wasn't People proud that I didn't I wasn't proud that I didn't have coffee. You were I was proud of proud. the fact that I it I people and I've said this before, so I don't want to harp on it too much. I know. People get really quagmire down in the ritual of coffee. Sure. Yeah. Rather than just doing the thing, they, they it, it's they slow everything down for the coffee. And I don't and I just I don't get it. <laughs> you just don't like being with coffee people. In the I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't that. like the That's man. The people that it's it's an if a man bu- thing. if a people with a person with a man bun is giving you the coffee. Yeah. You, you know what you've he, slowed he, it he all knows down. what he's doing. No, he sure. knows what he's doing. He probably does, That's but he's also slowed the from. whole process down. I understand what you mean because you're like, I gotta get going. Let's but go. Usually, Let's like go. on the rallies, people are there for enjoyment. It's their vacation, right? They yes. came to sports car vacation land. Yes, and it's for their enjoyment, so they're gonna stop. Guess what? Doesn't there's no man bun establishments in sports car vacation land. That's true. There, there just That's isn't. True, there isn't. So you just get a coffee from the seven. Uh, actually, now that I've had this, yeah, which is like the you're, worst. You're recommending thing, not. <laughs> maybe, maybe don't do that. Maybe even look like look at it. Yeah, it looks like dirty water. Right. That's what like, coffee like is. Like if you scoop this out of a puddle. Yeah. That's that's this. Yeah. <sighs> no, I, it, coffee is one of those things though that transcends. It's interesting. We're gonna go from a dollar's worth of coffee to a thousand dollars worth of coffee. Yeah, that's gonna be weird. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee is really interesting, though. It's one of those things that, like, transcends time and culture, right? Everyone, no matter what century you lived in or whether you were a king or a peasant. What was a delicacy? Religion, if you were a king, coffee was a delicacy at one time. Necessarily. Yeah, it had to be brought in. Nobody's, yes, nobody anyway, has it would, coffee. It was and, traded, et cetera. Yeah, it was, but like, it was a spice. Locals, but, all, but locals where coffee originates from, the tribesmen and people who were dirt poor, like that was just part of their life. Yeah. Right. So it transcends all these things and religion like Catholics, Muslims, everyone could agree on coffee as a beverage. Imagine if society broke down right now and nobody could have coffee because you wouldn't you don't have coffee here. You'd no, have to, it would have to be. You'd have to, yeah. So I'm reading. Um, I'm reading. Lu- <laughs> what? I just that's a funny thought. What the, we can't have coffee. No, it's just like if society breaks down, that's what you're focusing on. Uh, some like, people would. I don't get in my coffee. From what I've experienced on the rally, and from people like, oh, 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 I gotta have my coffee. Where is it? I gotta find it. Just Google Maps. I'm already sixty miles down the road, and these people are like, they can't yeah, barely crawl. You're like They're on like a crawling, mission, and that's not everyone's mission. Anyway, right? so I'm, I'm just saying that's part of the point. It would be, it would be, I was, I was reading Louis L'Amour. Yeah. And uh, there's a series of them called the Sackett novels. Okay. Which is basically, it follows a, an, an immigrant from coming over, why he came over from London all the way into the wild, wild west. Like his family oh, lineage. Cool. Yeah. Right. It's really cool. And one of the things that when he comes here, he goes and he has to find the Spaniards so he can get himself some coffee because <laughs> there just isn't any. Yeah. And they're bringing it up from the yep. Aztecs and I the like Mayans. That. Yeah. So they're bringing the coffee up from yep. South America yep. because there isn't any. Yep. And this dude is like, holy shit, it's so good. And he's so happy to have yeah. his coffee that, that he had. Cause so, cause it was a, it was a delicacy. It doesn't grow here. Right. Exactly. No, it's, it's, we'll get a bunch into the, like the climate that's required, but it's, yeah, you can't grow here. I do. I just noticed you have a coffee pin on. Yeah, this is Good Boy Bob. That's good awesome. Boy Bob coffee out in California. I love it. Okay, yeah. that's that's very timely. So what's interesting also about the history of coffee is like it was, imagine for the first time having caffeine in this amount, right? In this concentration. Because tea existed forever. I'm imagining the first thing that happened caffeine. was somebody went out and saw these beans huh. and they have a husk on them, correct? It's a berry. 
so we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so I imagine some dude was just like, just like ate the berry, and then yeah. like, we know like exactly, twenty minutes later, the dude was like, "We know exactly how it's discovered." And oh, we'll get to it. All right, all right. But what I'm talking about is even later, like middle middle ages, etc. Like it was almost looked down on as like this is it it. Well, let me just read to you some quotes okay. from history. Scottish politician and historian Sir James Mac and Mac Mackin. Oh, it is Macintosh. Okay, once <laughs> said that quote: "The powers of a man's mind are directly proportional." to the quantity of coffee he drank. Later, French novelist and playwright Honoré de Balzac, <laughs> Balzac, <laughs> he had a similar, albeit much more long-winded thought, quote, this coffee falls into your stomach, and straight away, there is a general commotion. Ideas begin to move yeah, like commotion in your the bowels. battalion of Grand Army of the battlefield and battle takes place yeah there's a battle in your bowels as soon as things you drink it. remembered arrive at full gallop ensuing to the wind the light cavalry of comparisons delivers a magnificent deploying charge the artillery of logic hurry up with their train of ammunition and the shafts of with the startup the sharpshooters similar arise and the paper is covered with ink for the struggle commences and is concluded with torrents of black water just as with a battle of power that dude is carried away. Yeah, exactly. But the only battle that ensues, like I was saying, is in my bowels. It takes about 15 minutes. But after. so vitalizing was the effect of coffee throughout the ages that several people have throughout history attempted to completely outlaw the drink. Here, it was, here's, it was here's, seen here's as thing. like a conduit of free thinking, Chris. So this is Mr. Balzac, right? Where is he from again? He's French. He's French. Okay, so you're in France. Oui. And, you're, <laughs> and you have bread. And then you have basically stew. Okay. (laughs) So you have to imagine this is, it's not like now where you you are a descendant of French. I will. Yes. I'm French and Welsh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm French and Welsh. Clevier was, is how you would Uh, say my uh, name. Yeah. Yeah, My, uh, my family actually took part in the Huguenot rebellion in France. It's like, uh, it's pretty cool. I have a cool uh, family history. Anyway, so you're in France. You're having a baguette, uh-huh. and you're probably having, like, lamb stew. Okay. Generally, and the same thing in England and a lot of Western Europe. Yeah. The food was very Europe bland. food is not great. Okay, it's Until very bland. The Mediterranean. And then right. you have something like this. So I'm just trying to understand the contrast of what these guys are saying. Okay, all of a sudden they discover coffee. Yeah. Right, and they're just like, it's holy. It's the opposite of bland, and it energizes you. Right. right. So these people had never experienced anything like that, because right. if you think about it, nothing that like grows in a plant that is a drug exists in our uh, longitude. If you think about it, like we're we're at a similar longitude uh, to like Poland. So yeah. France is a little bit south of us, but I don't really think marijuana anything- like old school ditch weed was natural. Yeah, but like if you think of like the tribes, the Native American tribes all had that. Like the the piece I suppose, of pipe. I suppose you're probably right in that regard, but it wasn't like South America where you could just grow all kinds of things that would blow your mind. <laughs> you know, exactly. Like, yes. Yeah. Cocaine yeah. and Poppies coffee. And, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because leaders in Mecca forbade coffee in 1511 because they believed it sparked quote radical thinking. Mm. Coffee was also attempted to be banned by certain 16th century Italian clergymen who called the drink satanic. However. Pope Clement VII, on the other hand, was so fond of coffee that he abolished the ban and actually had the drink itself baptized in the year 1600. I just wanted to check and see if the Taliban banned coffee, since you mentioned Mecca. Yeah. For women. Uh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have them doing no. that. No. Can't but have- I, I love that this, this Pope, Clement VII, like before it was it was banned because it's satanic. And I'm sure the Pope, you know, he he lives in a more opulent lifestyle, of course. He had his coffee and he's like, no, this is this is good stuff, guys. I'm gonna actually baptize the coffee itself. <laughs> okay. That's getting so, a little carried away. For all its alleged links to rebellious sediments, the Swedish government made both coffee and coffee paraphernalia, including coffee cups and dishes, illegal as recently as the 18th century. It's like it sparked all of this animosity. And coffee, when you think about it, is kind of an unintuitive drink, right? So, like, tea predates the discovery of coffee by a long time. And it makes sense, tea. You boil water with some leaves in it for flavor, and you happen to get some other various benefits, perhaps, right? Sure. But coffee, it's a burnt bean 
that you made into a drink. So how the hell did someone come to discover coffee? You got to tell me. Hold on. So we have 15 minutes before Kippenberger comes on. Okay. Should we get into this after Kippenberger? Should we should we leave the how did we get into coffee until I, I have a nice introduction and and uh transition to Kippenberger. All right. Well so you we got 15 there. minutes, right, 12 let's minutes. See if we can to do get 15 minutes. Work. Okay. All right. Well, the legend and origin of coffee date back to the ninth century in Ethiopia. It was there that a goat herder by the name of Kaldi witnessed something strange. The story goes that he realized part of his herd had wandered off and was missing. When he came over a hill to find the goats, he saw the normally lethargic animals frantically running around and literally dancing on their hind legs. Was that like the baby goat thing where they bounce around? Because it's so cute. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Shocked at this unusual behavior, Caldy the goat herder hiked over to investigate. What he found was that the goats kept returning to a particular grove of bushes and were eating as many of these berries that they could manage. Curious what the hell was going on, Caldi decided to try the berries himself and soon felt a rush of energy and vitality. Now, back in the Hold 1800s, on. Hold on. Hold on. vitality? No, no, this dude <laughs> sees his goats eating a berry and immediately feels like he needs to eat the berry as I well. I mean, if you're like, huh. I know, it's kind of a risk to eat yeah. a wild berry. Yeah. But he did it. I suppose picking it out of the goat's poop isn't exactly the same as, as the other type of coffee oh we'll get there okay we'll get there okay. yeah uh now back in the 1800s you have to remember the primary authority of like knowledge and information was the church okay so caldy wanting to know what this plant was brought a handful of these berries to a nearby monastery and when he explained to the catholic monks what had happened these men of god told caldy that this was clearly a product of satan right these Gotta be. goats, and first of all, goats are satanic. That's true. They probably didn't like the guy in the first place. Yep. Goats and love all it. of a sudden, the goats are being all like crazy. That's Satan at work. Yeah, it's gotta be. So disproving of this cursed fruit, they tossed the berries into the fire. However, as the berries started to roast, the now familiar intoxicating smell of coffee filled the air. Nearby villagers rushed to the monastery to find Jesus out Christ. what this new beautiful aroma was. They're like... That's new. How many bushes were they burning? I don't know. A lot. It seems like. It's like a coffee bonfire. I mean, maybe it was just the next door neighbor. Yeah, but let's... regardless, like people entered the monastery and they're like, what is that? Well, the monks deciding that such a heavenly smell could not possibly be a product of the devil, raked the now charred beans from the fire and doused them in a jug of water to further study them. Later that evening, one of the monks, while looking at the remains of this mysterious bean, decided to taste this soiled water that they were <laughs> quenched in. And while we're not sure of his immediate impressions, probably like, man, that was gross. What right? gas station did this come from? We do know <laughs> that the monk reported that the substance helped keep him awake and gave him renewed energy during his e evening prayers. Okay. It wasn't long before all the monks. Hey, if you're able to pray longer, it shouldn't be, be illegal. Good. It's, it's got to be, be good. good. So it wasn't long before all the monks in the monastery were brewing their own coffee and the discovery spread. And as time went on, interaction between the monks and foreign travelers so and traders. Is this Belgium? No, this is Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, traders and travelers come and go. And so they brought coffee to other parts of the world. A manuscript made by Al Jaziri traces the proliferation of coffee from Ethiopia to Yemen to Mecca and Medina, and later to Damascus, Baghdad, Cairo, Constantinople, which were the most important trading cities of the Middle East at the time. The Middle East was pretty much the hub of it was. everything. Science. Yeah, East versus yeah. West, right? Uh, by the 1500s, dedicated coffee houses started popping up in Egypt, Syria, and Istanbul, thus spreading more and more of the beverage and the culture behind it. It wasn't long before coffee's popularity made its way to Europe and finally to America. As for the term coffee itself, many etymologists trace the word to the Turkish word kafe, which was linguistically connected not only to the word meaning wine, kafe, kafe. It's like close to the uh, the I think it was Arabic word wine, but also shares a lot of similarity with the origin of the plant itself, the kafa region of Ethiopia. Ah, okay. So it's kind okay. of probably like a portmanteau of those. Sure. Uh, the coffee plant itself is actually a variety of plants categorized as the coffea genus of flowering plants. And the shrubs have been found to be native to southern Africa and tropical areas of Asia. The berries of these plants. Not, not South America? And it is South America, too. Okay. I think okay, I left okay. that out because 
Well, no, Ethiopia. Yeah, that was Africa. Maybe they moved it into. Ah, uh, no, South I'm, I'm guessing it was existed before uh, when the entire planet was one continent, Pangea, ah, and then they all split up. Spread. Right. Yeah. Probably right. The berries of these plants actually resemble a cherry, okay, and contain the bean itself within it. And there are two ways of processing the fruit for coffee production. You have dry processing which is the original manual technique, and wet processing, which is a modern process. So dry processing involves harvesting the coffee fruit and leaving them laid out in the sun to dry for weeks at a time. And the berries are manually turned over during this drying period, allowing the fruit to dry out, leaving just the bean. Wet processing that seems like the way to go. Well, yeah, but it's very like time consuming and Labor intensive, yep. yeah. So that's why wet processing came about, which basically means you throw all of these berries in a vat and soak them so the fruit becomes soft and then just rinse them off with a pressure washer so you're left with the bean. That sounds awful. <laughs> Regardless of the method, when uh, what is left is a dry green coffee bean. I found it interesting that during the process, most of the beans kind of split in half. Think of like a peanut, right? It'll split. Uh, however, approximately 5% of the beans harvested appear to remain whole. These whole beans can be sorted out and sold as pea berry coffee, which is a unique premium variety of coffee. Okay. The next step in coffee production is the roasting. Now, this can be done prior to packaging and distribution. Yeah, they burn the coffee. They put in a machine and go, well, let's get, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's really know this ahead is a great bit. because this is where all the flavor comes from, Chris. Okay. And oftentimes coffee is roasted on site at like a coffee house, which by the way, I think is my mark of like a good coffee shop. If they roast the beans on site. It's so like Dunn Brothers. Well, they have we control have over their game. entire process. Exactly. Uh, the roasting process requires perfect timing and temperature. The variation of this dictates how strong the coffee flavor will be and also the acidity. Yeah, if and, the oil all gets burnt out of the bean, right? Right. So this is where the term light roast or dark roast actually comes from. And interestingly, most people assume that a darker roast coffee, which has a stronger flavor, has more caffeine. But it's just the opposite. You see, the longer a coffee bean roasts, the more of the actual chemical compound known as caffeine is removed. So lighter coffee, gotcha. lighter roast well, actually has more caffeine. Yeah, but it, it's counterintuitive. You think it's stronger tasting. So it has, you know, most people are like, oh, I want the full strength dark roast. Yeah, well, that's less caffeine. Yeah, because it's all burnt out of it. Exactly. Just like anything else that you cook. Yeah, coffee comes in many varieties and types with the biological strain, geographical location, and roasting making up the variation. Many people may think that an espresso bean is a unique bean, but it actually isn't. It's the same bean. The only thing that sets an espresso bean apart is the roasting process. So a bean, you can put any coffee bean you want in an espresso machine. You can, yes. But there are specific, you know, as you know, like espresso beans. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, a bean coffee intended for espresso is roast much longer than any dark roast drip coffee, which removes much of the acidity, which is why you like espresso, and it releases more of the bean's natural oils, right? It's dehydrating You can actually it, see the oil slick the on oil. top of the Americano. Exactly. Yeah, so that's part of the process. Espresso is roasted longer, and it's, of course, brewed differently rather than simply running hot water over a coarse ground of coffee. Espresso beans are ground extremely fine, exposing more surface area for flavor to be extracted from, and then the high-pressure steam is sent through these fine grounds along maximum flavor to be captured from a small amount of water, giving a highly concentrated brew. Right. So while coffees, no matter the type, all originate from the same bean, there is one certain type of coffee that is exceptionally unique. Coffee Luwak, as it's named, is widely known as the world's most expensive coffee. Prices for the highly sought-after product can cost over $1,000 per single pound of beans. The origin and explanation of this unique type of coffee is truly fascinating. Christopher Kippenberger, it's good to have you on again, man. You sure the, the sound's okay, yeah? Yeah, you sound good, 100%. I got, I got you on my like uh, phone speaker thingy, like the, the, um, the speaker's thing. Yeah, it works great. You sound good. Okay. Okay, I'm just like I gotta hold it with like one hand. I'm on the I-95, like from Miami to Palm Beach. It's a little bit like it's a it's a version of Mad Max, like the old one and like the the reboot. So like a mix. What are you can driving? Go, can go from one thing to the next very quick. Driving a 2023 X7. The X7. That that thing is massive. 
I like it. You like it. So th- you're out, you're out, you're out of the Tesla now. You're you're done with that. You're on to an X7. Uh, well, for here, for Florida, yeah, it's like my sort of like non-polarizing rich people energy. You know, like I like it. There's not much in that segment that doesn't split hairs. You know, so you got like a Range Rover. That just means you overpaid, right? It's like. <laughs> You overpaid. You waited too long. The thing's going to drop like a hot to, hot potato in six months when all these banks collapse. <laughs> then uh, the Ranger or the, like the, the G-Wagon you bought with your crypto, but you're poor now. <laughs> you, might be a, you might be a stripper. Um, <laughs> Got to make that payment. It's almost like when you have like the last gen Range Rover, you're almost more rich than like the one now because now you're just a sucker because like you know you like paid like 50k over sticker to get it. Plus you waited like super long. Yeah, being and, rich is having the thing paid off at this point. Yeah, yeah. So most rich people I know they drive like, and these are people who could like buy parts of a factory where those things are made. Uh, they drive a 2015 Range Rover, like long wheelbase, like nothing screams wealth like that. It's weird, right? Like not even like the new, I mean, the new one's nice. I don't like the, the, the roof, the, the antenna thing they split, like on my Defender on the new one, it's one unit with the like camera thing on the roof, the sure. fin. And then on the new ones on the sport and on the, on the proper Range Rover, they cut it. And like, it looks fucking stupid, dude, having those two things on the roof. It's, it's interesting as I think as you gain wealth, I think you become more acutely aware of, uh, aesthetics. Well, also it's like, nothing screams new money. Like I just got this like ostentatious, right? Yeah, That's what he's talking about. Old money is, is subtle. Yeah. But there's so it's like, it's like a new, the, like the new iteration just kind of like is dawning, right? Where it's like the new what's old money version is just becoming new where it's like before we all kind of knew what it was. And now I don't know. It's like a fingerprint that's slowly being like lifted, right? Like it's like, uh, it's, I don't know. And where else, get, where can you tell more, more quick than a car? Right. That's the thing. So mm-hmm. what I do is like, I have like here, I try to dress so I can't be scanned, right? Like I like watch this from this other rich dude I know. Like he just wears like pajamas and shit and like a shirt. He'll throw on like a long sleeve shirt and you don't. You can't, there's no watch. There's no identifier. Like so I just I stole the the pajamas out of like what what steal them? I got them in first class and Lufthansa, but I wear them now. I got them on and um and then I don't wear a watch. I just wear like an Apple Watch and I just have these like hoka shoes and you know given i own a couple of the like these iter- like of the same thing in in multiple so it's like not like i'm wearing the same thing all the time but to the normal person like like who, who sees me regularly like it might you know it seems like it's one uniform and um then i think a lot of people think i'm homeless like in, 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 <laughs> you know and um that's exactly what i want right like uh like when like the barcode scanner reads me it just goes like eh. <laughs> you know like <laughs> this guy doesn't have shit yeah like this is weird. like i see you walking around do you think like one lady asked me the other day like do you live in the neighborhood i see you walking around a lot she's kind of like insinuating i don't have a car and it's like yeah i leave my fucking car at home because in south beach you don't need a car you can just walk everywhere and like I don't know. It's just, it makes, it's a, it's a choice. Right. And then when I want to, I can pull it out. And like, I, I learned that from the Swiss, right? Like they drive around these little Fiat, like pandas during the week, not panda, like the new cross version, whatever it is, you know, like the really honk wonky looking one. Yeah. And they like with rubber mats in it and like, you know, like a sticker on the back that says like chill out or something like that. And then Salt life. Yeah, yeah, like the Swiss version of that, and then like they on the weekend they pull out their F forty, and they got they got they got five of them. You know what I mean? So like they have these like um, you own your license plate in Switzerland, so not like uh, even in Germany or in here where the state owns it and can take it back anytime. Uh, I'm sure they can in Switzerland too, but like for the most part, you own it and you can transfer it, so you can transfer it to up to two cars. 
And that's why on the weekend you always see all the fancy cars come out because they like drive their like their fucking diesel Skoda pedophile cars during the week. And then uh, on the weekend they got like, you know, whatever, like all this like, like, uh, like my neighbor who all of a sudden then had like that car that was built here in Rivera Beach uh, based on the Corvette. I forgot the name. Uh, Mosler, I think. Moser? Mosler, Mosler, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he got the nine thousand GT, like, and it's just like one morning he has so many cars that he didn't know like where to put them anymore. So like, he he put one in my garage, and I like walked out of my elevator in the morning. That like the elevator goes into my apartment, so I got in, and then I like went down to the garage, which is not heated. And then all of a sudden, I just walk out of the garage, and there's this fucking Mosler standing there. I'm like, what? And then, um, yeah, so they they, they that's right. I think I it, I mean. As much as I despise the Swiss, uh, like, uh, and their mentality, and like, I mean, to a German, they're just like a bunch of inbred goat fuckers, right? That like stole our language, and then like, like, sort of, you might want to bleep that, but like, um, uh, like they stole our language, and then they were like, they harbored all the money for the Nazis, and like, gave up the Jews. And then they uh, they changed they abbreviated their language with a funky accent to pretend like they're not German. And then they don't like the Germans. And I'm like, if you don't like the Germans, why did you steal our language? Like, why don't you speak your own language or develop your own language? Or I don't know. Their history the- is really weird. How they built like there's like cannons all over in the mountains. Like they well, were gonna still s- is. I Wait, know it's our, so bizarre. Our, our house our house was built in 2013. And it has an atomic bunker, and wow. the, the the code of the city the city code is that um, each per like if each resident in the house must have space of so and so many like square meters in the bunker, and if not, the person who owns the house and is renting it out has to lease that space in the communal bunker, which was like up the street. And I mean, shit, my guy turned it into like a wine cellar, you know, but like, yeah, what I'm saying is like, I asked him and I was like, dude, you built this, like, why is there a bunker in this house? Like, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, that used to be like that. And I'm like, well, you built it in 2013. Like what used, <laughs> what used to, what used to be like that? Like, I was like, who are you afraid of? Like this, like the Germans or the, like, and then, then they, like the guy, like we're sitting at his dinner table. And like he, he went from kind of like speaking, they all can speak normal German, but what they do is then they like start, like they'll dial up the accent to like, so you can't understand them. And he'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like no, 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 no. Uh, who? <laughs> the Germans or, or like the Russians or the Italians? Or, and like, yeah, he like did that even more. And well, basically, like to the Swiss, like Switzerland is basically just the German speaking region, right? So any like upstanding Swiss citizen. Zurich and the surrounding region of like two cantons is Switzerland. Uh, Italy, like the Italian version of, uh, of of Switzerland, they would be willing more than happily that part. They'd be like, "Oh, can't do anything about that," you know. And then they would just blow like uh, the like the Bernardino Tunnel is like all charged up. They can just like blow all that wow. shit up and like close it down. And the um, uh, it's the, like the, it's their the, identity, though. I think it's become like who they are. Right. So they don't even know why they're doing it. They're it's neutral just, and we're prepared. Swiss. <laughs> this is, this is not, what we do. They're we, not. They're not. Dude. They're like, yeah, I'm neutral. And then like, then like, like in that sentence, like seven fighter jets fly over your head in the middle of the mountains. We're neutral. And then like, <laughs> you're like, uh huh, okay. Like, uh-huh. I remember you reading. Know? Wasn't there a requirement too for like every citizen to go through military training or like have a firearm in their yeah. household, right? Yeah, yeah, they're that most after the U.S. They're the most second uh, heavily um, armed nation in the world. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's it's they only have like five million people living there. You know. Yeah, I suppose. So yeah. Anyways, it was it was okay, but it turned into kind of Dogville in the end. Like we moved to this village, and they were all kind of nice at first, and then in the end, it really they it was like when Nicole Kidman was like uh, in that village in that Larson Tria film, and then in the end, like uh, James Con, her dad, was like a mob boss, comes and saves her, and he, he's sitting in the car with her, and then they're like looking out at the town folk who didn't know who she was the whole time that she was like this big mob boss's daughter. They just thought she was some random stranger that they then ended up abusing. And um, then the, James kind of like says to her, like, what do we do with these people? Like, like, we can just go back to the city. And then she looks out and she sees all these like uh, these these village people. 
and she turns to him and goes, no, well, for the the good of humanity or like another stranger who would like stumble upon this village like unknowingly we have to kill all of them and <laughs> that's how i feel about this village which is ironic because i'm going back there in like three weeks to go visit the spa but um no i'm just saying like it's it's a weird place and like i mean in a sense i'm gonna end it with this like just for the record it was a german village that was uh people that felt persecuted in germany moved to and like you know before christ i don't know a long time ago and they stayed there and populated it you could only go over the mountain to access it and it was like really hard living and so to me it was always like it's my village as a part german and they're just basically robbing us of our swiss where i'm like nah wait a minute buddy like, this is all founded by us. So, like, actually, you're the visitor here. And they didn't like that at all, you know? Like, when I told them that, and it was like, there's three last names in the whole village. And then I'd always, like, fuck with them and be like, oh, are you related to so-and-so? And with the same last name? And they'd be like, no, 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 that's a whole, that's a different Schmidt. I'm like, but, uh, really? Like, <laughs> there's, there's 300 people living here. Like, how could that be a different, like, whole name? Oh, no, no, that's what this SCH we're S, like you know, like we're just S H. Like, did you change that yourself? <laughs> so it didn't look like you married your cousin, basically. Yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting what's happening. I mean, we're watching the uh, Credit Suisse bank collapse in real time, which is interesting. I'm sure that's going real over real well. In oh, bro! Like in Switzerland, like uh, UBS, that's getting like swallowed up by like Credit Suisse or whatever, like. All that stuff, I have no idea what any of that means. I'm just repeating it like a parrot, but like just the 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 viewing of it, or let's say the optics is like everybody, you know, us plebs are like, oh no, the banks is like, nah, dude, that was all kind of like planned, and they're all like super happy and toasting, you know, like that meme where they're like, uh, like like where there's all these white old guys in a in a laughing in a room, and then there's yeah. a meme and it says underneath like, oh, like uh, dough coin or I don't know, whatever, just like it's like. It's like, yeah, we know so little, and it's like, you know, who knows what's really going on, and then, like, the financial system always finds some way to sort of, like, resurrect itself with a new scam, and, you know, it just keeps going. There's so much money invested that, like, they can't, people can't afford to let it go all the way, and it's all invented anyway, so, like, they'll just invent some other stuff, and then it just keeps in, like, new invention, and then, oh, we made it out of that one, I guess I'm gonna buy myself a new house, five, and, like, you know, like, like five like, new houses. Just, yeah, it just keeps going. Well, no, I meant like more like the population, right? Where oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, like, um, kind of like it's it's just some perceived danger that doesn't really exist because danger doesn't really exist. It's just some made up term. So I don't know. It's weird. It's but it's kind of deep. I just kind of wanted to talk about coffee. But I know, man. It's, 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 it's how it goes. We we talked about coffee for like twenty minutes before giving you a call. I've got your. I've got it right here in my I have hand. Like, I have like a, a a night school degree, you know. So please, anybody listening, I, not even like a, a high school degree. Like I had to go to I had to go to like uh, like the like kind of like the short bus, like this little room where there's like all these like minorities who could like barely speak English. Like that's where I got my like that's like my end all kind of like qualification, you know. Like I don't even have like a I don't even have like on the drop down thing where it's like do you, some college or like whatever. It's like, it's like it doesn't even, it doesn't even show up, you know what I mean? It's just like night school room like not so they're like oh you mean the ged i'm like no it's proper high school degree but like i i just had to get it differently you know yeah i was in something called the turnaround program oh, Tap. Uh, yeah, yeah i was in the same it was like a room with no fucking windows yeah there's like too. 10 of us in there oh, yes. oh man we had our own lunch period time and everything it was oh, couldn't oh, let you that sounds like a, that sounds like a separate division no but like anyways <laughs> Uh, what, what, I, what I'm saying is that, like, I'm definitely, like, the uh, everything I say is, like, I have to, like, a disclosure that, like, none of it is, like, financial advice. None of it is, like, you know, like. <laughs> no, like no life advice allowed. No. All right. No, so th no, this I coffee, think, man, this offshore, yeah. I've got the can in my hand. We've got the, the bottle yeah. after we hang up is what we're going to try. We're going to pour yeah. in a glass and we're going to try it. Yeah. And we yeah. talked kind of about um, coffee a little bit before having you on. But why did you, like, why did you start doing this? What is the, the reason behind Viacule, uh Coffee? Uh, well, um, I obviously like coffee. I only do stuff, you know, like that. that and then uh, trying to, like, not pay the other people, like, for the product that I like. And then getting it, kind of, like, 
like Kanye said, like the goal is to play the video game for free, right? Life. So in this case, like I don't want to pay the other person for the product. I want to have my own the way I want it. And then I also want to like make like spread it, you know, like make more of it to spread it to the unknowing, which is like, if you know, then you have to like your responsibility is like you have to tell the unknowing, right? That's like the rules. So in this case, before I was in like making my own coffee, um, you know, to me, it was coffee was like a tree, like there was no branches or leaves or different kinds of trees. It was just a green blob that was like, yes, I need this in the morning. Otherwise, I'm going to kill people. So um, then by like getting into the production of it uh, or researching, just actively paying attention, like uh, building awareness about, you know, different tastes, like textures, like looking at what's on in there really. And then just doing that for like, you know, like it's like looking at your, your groceries, like more in depth, right? Like reading the thing, you're like, what's gum, whatever. And then you're like, <laughs> why is there a color in my donut? Like, you know, like, it's like, like the more, oh, why is that color illegal in Europe? But it's legal here, but it's a German the gummy bear, which is not allowed to be sold in Germany, but allowed to be sold in America. Like, you know, like there's all these things that just come up and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Right. So that's sort of the the premise where like I was just like, I just want a clean fucking cold brew with no sugar, no weird funky shit in it. No like Monsanto beans, like no, you know, like just the clean thing. And then we started we were in England over the summer and like just ordering the stuff uh, home and. It was kind of pricey. Then we came back to Berlin. And like and it was difficult to get it. And then like my girl was just like, "Yo, dude, I like, found some." And I was like, "Why don't we just like contact these people and ask them to make the stuff for us?" And uh, we did, and that was pretty simple. The um, uh, people in these kind of like niche, like let's say non-corporate, like food industry people are ten- like tenderly pretty egoless and nice. Like they're not like car people or fashion people or you know like they're just like they're pretty that's what they do and that's it there's no like oh but i know better like yeah that does exist but like it doesn't it's not the first thing you hear out of their mouths you know for the first part they're just like they're they're happy that you like their product and then they're like kind of probably suffering on some distribution angle or you know like it's it's a lot of moving parts and uh, that's different than the industries you're used to working that must have been nice yeah, 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 it was cool. So anyways, we did that. We came up with, like, looked at a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then we found these guys in Munich that are, like, brewing this the way we wanted, just, like, really clean with alpine water. And, you know, just like, wow, cool. There's a nitro thing in it. They explained that to me, that there's a little widget at the bottom of the bottle, like, that carries, like, the nitrogen gas. And when you un- open it up, like, it unleashes that gas and infuses the coffee, which makes it... Um, gives it like a slight metal taste but in a really nice way and that's a weird way to try describe it but that's just I, I i actually read that myself and um i was i was doing a little bit more research on this gas because uh, i used to like as a degenerate teenager love inhaling nitrous balloons you know <laughs> and um <laughs> i was like oh wow now i'm drinking it my coffee but yeah um that was sort of the, the, the thing. And then um, this, everything t- takes forever. We finally got the, the can. And then it was like, now nah, what? It's like, fuck, okay, let's just drink it ourselves. Then gave it to a few places. They seemed to like it. And so it is kind of like a legal drug. People, uh, it's hard to talk about, I found, um, versus like the other stuff I've done with, with, with this beverage or food stuff. Like people just need to take it into their system like they need to consume it like there's no you can just talk about it to a certain extent like and then people's eyes glaze over like oh my god this guy in this coffee uh <laughs> no like so it's like it's like 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 basically i'm a non-food guy who made the food the way i wanted it with the right people and then some then the, like all of a sudden i'm selling the can now for twenty dollars and the, those guys who are, have the same coffee in a different can are selling it for, I don't know, having a hard time selling it for like $2. The, the manufacturers, they're like, oh my God, let's raise the prices on this guy. He seems to be doing very well. But what they didn't know is that I went to the competition and, you know, did a similar deal with them and then just switched to them when they started this fuckery, which that, that's what mostly happens in that world. It's very like uh, the night of the long swords, you know, or the long knives. Like people like will just like, Oh, yeah, we agreed on that price. Yep, you got it in writing. Mm-hmm, I agree. Mm-hmm. 
but it's a different price now. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know, it is like, well, actually, it's interesting that you bring that up. We went to your competition and we're going to be doing it with them. Have fun with that, like, stock. Yep, and then, goodbye. like, you know, you let it, yeah, see you later. And, like, uh, bah, 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 bah. and then, like, you get them back to the table. But that's more it is. It's more like the, 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 if scaling it up is a, is a different thing than making a few for you and your friends, you know? So then we decided that. We're like, what can we do to sort of make this like a little bit more interesting and like, first of all, not bore ourselves to death with it because like, after all, you know, it's just some brown water. Um, what are we going to do? So uh, we we researched what's the most expensive like coffee bean out there. And it's this like Kobe Luvak bean, which comes from this palm civet in Sumatra that eats the beans and then they like partially digest and then they poop them out. And then that poop is collected, and then that becomes this uh, coffee blend that's like the most expensive coffee in the world, which is like, I don't know, 3K, Google it, it's a commodity, you know, like a, a kilo, 12K, it goes up and down. So I was like, all right, well, we're in Miami, the place of like the crass and the vulgar. Uh, obviously, these people are just not good enough for my $4 can. Let's raise the price to 20 and then, you know, uh, have partner with some people here in town who can like gain attention that yeah boom it works and but that even that wasn't enough so we did the kobe luvak bottle at a thousand and now all of a sudden everybody wants the fucking coffee mm -hmm. we we live in a disgusting world <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it so is all these, how that all comes together it is it is bizarre but like now all of a sudden all these celebrities want it and like you know like i can't really say all these names but you know people are coming that like everybody knows and has heard of and they want this coffee and they get a picture with it and then it's sold out on our website so people go and like see the product for a thousand sold out and then they see the one for 20 and they're like oh that's a deal and they buy that and i, I just oddly enough um well there's a sidebar but like i'm in this investor like zoom call like, i don't know two days ago and it's about a guy who I, a fan who I like, and he uh, wants to like put a little money in and blah, blah, blah. And he's in the Zoom call drinking the, 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 the can and keeps holding it into the, into the camera going, this is amazing. It's amazing. And he goes, this isn't, I mean, it's not the Kopi Luvak, but it does the job. So like basically he's referencing the thousand, he bought the thousand uh, uh, dollar bottle. And he's, so he's saying it's not the thousand dollar bottle, but this $20 one will do too. So you have to imagine these guys, they go out to a lunch and they spend like five grand on one bottle of wine and they buy four of them. So mm. to them, that thousand uh, dollar bottle of coffee is sort of a bargain, you know? And we forget that alongside this like gigantic shit show that's going on all over, there's more and more very very wealthy people you know and some of these people happen to be cool they're not like child sacrificing like you know celebrities with money they're like just like some dude you know yeah. who you know went through a lot of shit in their life not everyone with money is a you know a bad person or it needs to be taken from them or they need to you know like <laughs> like there is such thing as just being smarter than the other people uh, and like working harder than them and then also having a little bit of luck and uh, maybe saying a prayer or two when you wake up in the morning and those people tend to do quite well so why not like uh, offer them something like that that they can buy and brag about and I don't know it's, to me it's more like a social study all of it and um, yeah so that's kind of where we're positioned right now and it's growing and like you know more cans come more cans go out and then like you know um right i i deliver them right now there's one in the car i'm on my way to palm beach to uh meet um inter uh, i'm not gonna say it now i'll say it after maybe when i hang up but a car guy we all know and i got a can with me for him so it's a it's a it's a it's a like a business card that you give people and i i just i'm a big fan you know i'm a producer so like I'm always into production. I'm always into like, like somebody of mine likes hot sauce. He made his own hot sauce. Like I, I see that more and more that people that just sort of like, it's not hard, you know, you just got to put some little time in it. You like something like create it, you know, like, like make, 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 make your own little product and give it, start by giving it to your friends. And, you know, you never know, take a shot, you know, you never know where it ends. And 
to me, I mean, it's different than just like starting some startup with no brand attached to it. Like, um, I'm going to end the story with this. The guy wanted to invest, right? The one I was just talking about. And he like has quite a bit of money. He, uh, he bought his daughter, like a, like a, like a beverage company, like startup, like, a, like, I don't know. I think it's a sake or something. So, like failed right like he can't he's he's referencing my drink going like i can't believe that you're selling this for 20 i'd be happy to move mine at four so i i, I took then, 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 but then i was like all right cool cool all right well at the moment we're we're, we're just offering like a buy-in for this new beverage company right like vehicle my main brand that's not up for investment that's basically the marketing company for this new beverage company which will be paid by the new beverage company so like you're it's like Nike who like owns the swoosh owns a separate comp is owned by a separate trust than like the sales and the creative and then they all pay each other and no one pays taxes and everybody flies a jet. So <laughs> I'm doing that on a smaller scale, but see the rich like self made guy obviously saw through that and noticed that like without that brand that I built up, that coffee can goes right back to the fucking pumpkin the same way his like daughter's nepotism sake brand won't sell um so he wanted me he, he he said i gotta lift the komodo on my uh numbers for the main brand so i was like a little put off by it but i take everything like sort of like a uh, instruction from the universe and it was like well you don't want to do that chris but maybe you should just do it instead of saying you're not going to do it so i talked to my like financing guys i talked to my wife who like runs the company with me and then we like get underway and do this during the weekend. And like, it really put me in a bad mood. Uh, the result was though that it looked like the outcome was very, very good. And we wrote the guy back a letter and said, um, you know, thanks for that exercise. And we liked what we saw. And uh, we're like the, the main brand, as I said, is not up for investment. And by doing this exercise and, you know, generating this sort of like insight, it's, it's, it's confirmed that. And then uh, we said that, you know, we're, we're willing to take on board like a little bit of investment for the beverage company. Um, just because it's good. Like you have a few people, like give them a point, they put a little money and then they just talk about it differently to their friends. And it's like something, a new kind of like adult way of doing business that I'm sort of like, investigating let's say right or like sort of curious about um because i've always done everything like very you know kind of like anarchy like let's just fucking get it done and so you know i'm trying to like evolve myself too or at least be open to it and then we finished with the sentence if you need any help moving your beverage dead stock we'd be happy to talk to you about doing some consulting for you so, haven't heard back from uh, <laughs> from the guy. <laughs> it is interesting, though. Like <laughs> by setting that price signal, it is an exclusive thing, and it is what makes it desirable. Well, there's a, to make a, a 911. Other than some engineering costs, it doesn't cost any more than making a Golf. Realistically, it's right. turn up the boost, add more fuel. This has all been figured out. You know, the margin on that is far higher just because of the, the mark. Yeah, but right. what I what I kind of find interesting or where I was going with that is like it is a status symbol, obviously, for some of these people. But right. that's at odds from our previous, you know, you were alluding to how you wear the sweatsuit because you like kind of the animosity and the truly wealthy don't want to flaunt it. How is there? How do you rectify that? And what's the product? So like the product needs to be good. I'm also in a really I'm in a good product driving uh, you know, the stuff that like, like I touch and consume needs to be the best. It's less, but it's, it's the best. So like, I don't go out and eat like at these restaurants in Palm, in, uh, in, in, in Florida generally, they're all just the Cisco truck that drives up in the morning. And then there's a different chef inside preparing this, the Cisco food, putting different price tags on it, but it's all like trash. It's, it's all the same trash, right? It's all like, like poorly, uh, it's like, designed food and like you get like uh, i get like now since i'm off of it for such a long time if i eat that at one business dinner that i can't get around and i just like i already don't drink so i'm a little weird and then if i don't eat like i've done it at meetings like at, at, at like two hour like dinners and it's just it's very it puts the other people in a weird position right so like I'll, i've tried it and sometimes it's kind of fun but like 
the last time I folded and I like ate like two, three bites. And then the next day I had like the Cisco truck hangover where I'm just like, oh my <laughs> God, dude, I feel like I got hit by a train, dude. So like, I'm very uh, just conscious about that. And I mean, there's two differences, right? There's like a product that's really, really good, which is hard to make. And just like, especially I'm not VW. I can't just like take parts from the golf and put, make it into a Porsche like I have to go out to the open market which is a legacy market usually like if it's a magazine or if it's a coffee or a beverage and there's a bunch of gatekeepers and people telling you it's not going to work and they control the resources and they own the million dollar like machines to make all that shit and it's a printing press or a coffee making facility and there's a lot of time invested you know like I probably spent a quarter of a million dollars just like getting to where I am right now right and I can recoup that through my other like businesses but it's still to me like you know no, i don't see a lot of people doing that that i know that have a little bit of money and like like they'll buy themselves like five new rolexes like i don't see people out there like like throwing that against something that they want or like don't that they, they feel doesn't exist already and they want to do it but they don't there's no outcome or any sort of guaranteed outcome like at least if i bought like five rolexes i'd be pretty sure that those would be, you know, worth more in six months than they are now. So like, right. it's a, it's a risk that I'm carrying with everything I do, you know, everything I do, the gun is loaded, uh, the, the, the fingers on the trigger and the safety's off. And I'm usually scared as fuck. Like, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. FedExing cans in of coffee while my one of my friends who spent 15 million on a beverage brand had like Kim Kardashian, uh, uh, endorsing it failed, you know, like I'm, the odds are always stacked. So, uh, it would be really weird if I were to charge like, like a really, really low price, which I tried. Nobody was interested. That was the other thing. Like I I tried it. Nobody wanted it. So it's like, um, uh, then the next thing would be giving it away for free, which if I was like really wealthy, that would be my brand. I would just do free. I'd be like, how much does it cost? It's free. That's, that would be my thing. There's a water company called Free Water, and they just do advertising on the can and the, and the products free. That would be my, if I could, uh, not to say it wouldn't be possible, but that would be my, like, let's say, North Star, where I'd be like, if I could, it would just be a free product and um and good and real and better than all the others i think because that that's a hard thing to beat there's a lot of that that'd be a hard product to do a negative review on right like oh this is <laughs> really good and it's free but you know people are insane they'll find something with that too they'll be like yeah well it wasn't really free it was like you know like i had I to pay the gas to, to go get it i still had to go to the supermarket yeah. these guys are a scam you know people pe- people will be beat people you know it's usually the weakest link well, Mr. Really Beast just gave away like ten or twenty thousand pairs of shoes and got like destroyed for doing it. Really? Who did? <laughs> Mr. Beast. Who did? Mr. Beast. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. he gave away ten thousand pairs of shoes in Africa, and everybody's like, "Well, it wasn't really charity because you had a sponsor for it." And it's like, <laughs> yeah. are you fucking kidding me? Right. Jesus, I know. it's better I than know. not doing it. Yeah, it's. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's again night school, like uh, <laughs> high school. You know what I mean? Like, I think I've done quite well for myself. And sometimes it's just a good idea to like push myself back to the shallow end of the pool. You know, it's just coffee, dude. You know, it's good coffee. Yeah. It's, um, I looked at a lot of the stuff that's on the market here. There's a lot of, uh, really good, uh, peers that we have. They're usually localized. So like, um, what happens with the nitro is like the FAA comes in and there's some, there's some difficulties with, um, sending it, mm-hmm. sending it cause it needs to stay within the cool chain if you're infusing it. Right. So usually the best nitro is like, the same way a beer would be like uh, leaving the, the, the factory like in a, in a draft, right? And that's the same way like uh, with the nitro uh, cold brew is that like if you infuse it from the factory, that's the really, that's the premium shit. But it needs to stay in the cooling chain from the factory to when GoPuff brings it to my door in Miami, it's a cooled can. So once it leaves that, you know, uh, no bueno. Uh, I don't know what happens if like the nitro gets fucked, but that's just like the way it's set up. So the, the workaround are these widgets and um, uh, there's not a lot of people out there that are doing a clean version of it. Even like these, like the main players that are sold at like Trader Joe and, and Publix and Whole Foods and Publix, the, the local supermarket brand here in Florida, but whatever it is, wherever you are, um, that is coming from a, a food incubator 
um, and they have the major brand, right? So if you go to like, I'm not going to name them because I don't want to give them free advertising, but if you go to like any one of these supermarkets, you'll see it. And then look at the ingredients on just their normal cold brew. First of all, it's going to be kind of hard to find one because like they'll be with like blueberry oat milk or uh, I don't know, like some other like poisonous trash. And then the one, if you do find it, just like the black one, I, I, I looked at the ingredients and it was like, all of a sudden there was like these things in there, like chicory root. I was like, uh, what is chicory root and what is it doing in my coffee? And so you Google it and it's like, this is an, a, a, it's a flavor enhancer. And then the only document you could find off of it, like that it's good for you is coincidentally owned by the same incubator <laughs> yeah. that made that coffee. And then you're like, oh, that that's not suspicious at all. Well, and look then, at your ingredients. It says filtered water, coffee, yeah. coffee beans. Single yeah, origin, Europe, Columbia, Arabica yeah. coffee beans. That's it. If, if, in Germany, if you didn't, if you like um, mislabeled that or did something, you'd go to prison. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, it's like our beer, too. There's like three things in it or four mm -hmm. things. Like, and that's the Reinheitsgebot, and that worked for hundreds of years and, you know, like leads to a good result. So, that's the same approach here. It's like, uh, it's, it's just, it sounds so making like stuff really simple and good. is very, very difficult. You know, if you, um, uh, there's coffees here in this country that I'm not blaming it so solely on this country, but this happens to be the biggest cold brew market. So I'm just, I'm the most familiar with this one. There's a uh, coffee out there that you're probably consuming daily that has, uh, aroma added to it coffee aroma can you imagine this? that'd be like adding a wine aroma to wine or a whiskey aroma <laughs> to whiskey it's like why in the like why is that allowed and why is it being done and why is it being talked about so like there's so much um, because it's something to be purchased yeah i know it's convenient it's in the front aisle it has like a spanish name no, no i meant the, the aroma like the actual physical yeah, chemical yeah. of the aroma yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, yeah, but they had there had to have been a need for that no, aroma. There was produced. a trade show, a coffee trade show, and some guy says, "Hey, I'm <laughs> I, I'm I, it's his buddy. His buddy starts the aroma company so that he yeah. can buy the the aroma from the aroma company." But right, it's yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very excited what? to try the cold brew yeah, here. I didn't do. realize that it is a nitro cold brew. Yeah. so this yeah, has. Nitro the nitro canister it, in it in it so you have i'm, I'm sorry I, put, you have, I think we sent you a can and a bottle right we do we, we have did. the bottles in the fridge yeah. right yeah, now the I bottle, didn't yeah. we're gonna yeah. right after yeah. we hang up here we're gonna go yeah. grab that we're gonna pour it in a glass that's, we're gonna try it together that's good with the glass and a big ice cube the can is to be served in the can you don't gotta pour it out it's sure. like almost some of the nitro gets lost but yeah that's the one with the little nitro widget when you're done with it just like maybe if you want to see it pour a little water in the can, give it a good one rinse over and then take a pair of like gardening scissors or I don't know, like a, a knife and just cut into the can once. And then you can just rip it in half and you'll see it. It's quite big. Actually. It's like the size of a, a hairspray nozzle kind of thingy. And that's basically good at the bottom of the can. So that's interesting. If you want to inform yourself, you can, you can yeah, look yeah, at it, yeah, and, we'll when, check it out. And, and, and when you, when you drink other uh, coffees, you can see that too at the bottom. One last thing that I was going to say, I, I kind of slipped my mind because I'm like, driving talking kind of like sure. like looking at maps was like this idea that like back to the aroma thing that like i think also something that i became aware of that i had myself was like that most people like especially here when i say here i mean like america which is a huge market and is very important to us um they have an idea that of coffee being more of an idea uh, or like a, like um, a scratch and sniff sticker. So it's more of like a, a smell that's being marketed uh, or a flavor profile, which when you get deeper into the drink business, that's how you're evaluated by the flavor profiles that you've generated, created, trademarked, and then owned. That's how like mm -hmm. Capri Sun, a German brand that we're, we're kind of talking with one of the partners there, like they... They own, like, I think 136 flavor profiles. And that is, like, hideous shit, right? Like, kiwi, strawberry, melon, I don't know, whatever. Colors of the rainbow. Those are owned by them, and they can be defended if stolen. They did um, a deal with, uh, like, an investment bank, and they leased those 137 or whatever it is flavor profiles from them not even, they didn't sell them, just a, like basically a, a rent for these profiles for $1 billion. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. And 
and it's limited, right? So it's like whatever time frame. I'm, I don't know. I'm just paraphrasing here. It's like, you know, it's oh, it, you can Google it. But that's like the kind of stuff you start meeting when you go down the beverage uh, uh, hole, right? Where it's just like, what is it really? What's the, what's the, what's the, like, you know, it's like life insurance. Like, what's the human, what's the human's life worth? <laughs> and everything is really measured on that. Right. But it's like, you know, nobody really wants to talk about that. So, so from like, a business standpoint, thing. when you look at like a flavor profile of what you're doing, yeah. You can't take a loan out on your flavor profile because it's water and coffee, right? Uh, well, that's where it gets interesting. That's where maybe probably they're adding the aroma, right? That, that they can like make mm. copyright it. But um, they're naming also in America, like 95, when you say organic, only 95% needs to be organic. So you have a filler of 5%. That again, in Europe, you'd go and go right to prison if you, <laughs> if you did something like right. that. But, yeah. And that loophole isn't even there. So it's, it's stuff that is just slowly, uh, uh, like, you know, it's just like a new video game. Like you're like, what? I didn't know that existed. But to answer your question for us, it's more of a, a general brand, right? Like this is, it has our, our vehicle brand yeah, on yeah. it. This is going, uh, we're in the, like the same private jets we're in with the magazine. Now we got the coffee. It's, it's, it's a big network of people that, you know, are attached to us. And since there are, uh, contrary uh, to popular belief, a few people left who actually value uh, people going the extra mile to uh, create something of value. Uh, when you do meet these people, they and 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 they become fans. They tend to be your best uh, advertising because first of all, they're consuming it themselves. Second of all, they're going around telling their friends, and that's sort of where we're at. As a you zoom out a little bit and like just you know like where our brand is at after, you know, let's say four years of day and night work. And that is very rewarding. You know? yeah, so where very, can people, uh, where can people find, if they want to buy some of these cans, where can they get them? Um, they can go to the website. There's like, they come and go like, uh, depending on sort of, uh, and then like, you know, you got to reproduce larger batches and those are being kind of like shipped around the world. So it's kind of like a hit and miss. Um, you can, you can check the site once in a while. We'll link it in the show notes for everybody. Wants yeah, to yeah, know. yeah. But more to come. It's really like at the moment, um, it's more about just giving it to our friends and like getting them stoked. And then, you know, stuff happens like by itself. It's interesting. I'm more and more the, the, the idea that it's not so much like all these like, like in the, it's not like the, it's not singular. Like the thing is like, more everything's more connected than we as stupid monkey humans like can process right so like by doing that like with the with the with the coffee then like all, like then the right person finds it who is looking exactly for that then like you're like all right well then you have that well how the fuck are we going to sell this like these supermarkets are doing a 60 40 split meeting with supermarket people i mean god bless them i'm sure there's a, ni- a couple nice ones out there but these have got to be the stupidest arrogant motherfuckers i've ever met and i used to work in hollywood uh, i've worked in fashion i've worked in art and i thought i met like the scum of the earth but these supermarket people especially the ones with little smaller gourmet markets they are the new like soup nazi like they are uh i w- they're like the kind of people that would ask a sales rep to give them a blowjob in order to put the product in the in the, in the shelf right wow. and uh, they are bad people most of them the ones i met so like finding a way to circumvent that then like some other company gets in touch with you who's a fan of this and they're like well we make these shipping containers and we just did a whole bunch for louis vuitton and like we want to do one for you like what is there anything we could do and i think oh my god that'd be great maybe we do a shipping container with the with the coffee yeah that's a, and then you know that's what i mean like with not being singular and like i think a lot of times you can only do your best to the middle line right and then the universe has to come and do the rest because like we're just stupid insects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, dude, I appreciate it. Uh, if anybody wants to support this, I think it's pretty rad. You can head over to the website, check it out, see if there's any there, maybe bookmark it and check it every once in a while. And uh, you can follow uh, Kippenberger and Vehicule on social media as well. All the links will be in the show notes. I appreciate what you're doing, man. I appreciate you taking the load of gun and taking a risk on something. You know, we, Jake and I here have done that with Overcrest, uh, with the rally and everything that we're doing. So I'm your mentality. I'm with you hundred percent and I wish you the best of luck. 
thank you so much guys i'll i'll be i'll be sure to send you like a box for the road so you have it for yourself or you can hand one out if the person is uh it's the criteria you know like that's right. the other thing yeah and if they don't you take it away from them again mid drink Ooh, yeah. i like that I, I, yeah. i'd be happy to do that that sounds like something i would do anyway yeah. mid sip this is not for you all right man take care buddy. anyways have, have a great day speak soon yes take care bye, bye. Many thanks, of course, to the enigmatic Christopher Kippenberger. It's uh, it's cool Always to hear about the process. I, you know, it's it sounds like a real passion of his. Yeah, and I, and I and I love that. And he's right. Anytime you do stuff like this, it's a huge risk. Yeah, for Anytime. sure. Oh yeah. You know, it's as as you know with overcrust and everything else that we're yep, doing. Any venture you do, any venture you do, it it involves huge risk, and there's always someone out there that's bigger than you. Oh yeah. You know, thinks they do it better. It's than an uphill you. battle. It, for is, sure. it is an uphill battle because there's no there's no new ideas anymore. No, right? it's, it's not really. It's usually things that are born out of love. And then people want to um, they want to be part of what you love. Right. And love it with you. And yeah. I think that's, that's and really, you should really support awesome. the things. All right. So we're going to try love. this stuff. But before we do that. Yeah. Let's talk about our sponsor, Petrol Box. Speaking of things that we love, I really do love Petrol Box. Yes. Subscription service made just for car guys, automotive enthusiasts, car girls as well. Um, once a month, they send an awesome box that's curated, kind of has the latest and greatest tools, equipment, gadgets, I think would be a great term yeah, for a lot go. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you get t-shirts usually. We've gotten sweatshirts. We've gotten gloves. We've gotten hats. It's really cool the things you get. Great, great for gifting, too. It is an amazing gift because a lot of times the people that are into cars and whatnot, they're hard to give gifts yes. for, right? Yeah, yes. So it's Admittedly a great gift. So. Check them out at my petrol box dot com and be sure to use overcrest that'll get you a deal on checkout check them out we really do like those guys okay so i i wasn't quite done with my story well i'd like an to explanation i want to try this while we I while like we talk idea. so once you so hold it up to the camera so you can see right it here. you can hold it all the way up there this is there the vehicle copy luec cold brew right there yeah there and it is you can tell it is this is high end yeah, so, I'm excited to try it. Yes. Should I now break keep, the wax seal? No, I should just, just twist it off. Twist yeah. it there. Not drop it. That would be bad. Yeah, let's not do that. Okay. Mm. It is unique and smooth. Tape. All right, pour me some. Oh, that's all I get? That's all you get. It is very smooth. I'm, I mean, it is very smooth. It's it's quite. Can I have more, please? <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. You can have the rest. All right. So we'll 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 so let's cheers to Kippenberger. Let's do it. And via kill coffee. coffee. All right. So Copy Luwak is renowned as oh, the that most is, that expensive is, coffee. It is quite good in the world. Yes, and it's it's fascinating. The explanation where this comes from okay let's hear so it. back in the 18th century sumatra and java were part of the dutch colonial empire and the native coffee plant was made into a cash crop when they came in and colonized so profitable was this plant in fact that the dutch occupiers forbid the indigenous people from harvesting it oh i'm sure they did even if it's wild nope not allowed yep okay. here join our become christian join our colonial yep. thing and then and we'll just totally rape and pillage your kind yeah. of yeah and like keep in mind these locals have been drinking coffee generations before these dutch assholes arrived so can you imagine someone invading your home forcing you to work on these plantations by the way where let's be honest you would be expected to get up early without your beloved cup of coffee that you had always known it's terrible. So the locals were desperate for their cup of coffee, but it was strictly forbidden. <laughs> I see where this is going. Yeah. To uh, <laughs> grow or harvest the coffee plant for themselves. I'm sure people tried and there was swift punishment for yes. it, as you can imagine. That's they probably why. saw the grow lights like from inside oh, yeah. their house. Oh, yeah. Man, they got, that, that, yeah. Better rate them. So that's when some industrious or more likely downright desperate individual noticed they had a bad ca caffeine headache <laughs> they did so they noticed that the local island rodent the palm civet as it's called had an affinity for the coffee fruit and would leave the fully intact bean in its poop you can see where this is going 
The locals then clean and roasted these previously digested beans and began to brew their own coffee from the poop beans. And as disgusting as this may sound, they found that this poop coffee had an extraordinarily, extraordinarily unique flavor. You see, as the civet digests the fruit of the coffee tree, it not only removes the outer flesh of the berry, the process also naturally removes much of the acidity from the bean. The brewed product of this process makes for an extremely smooth coffee with a larger body to the taste, which I'm going to imbibe in a little bit more. It is smooth. It's the first coffee I've had that's better than what I have at home, which is not surprising because I'm not like the end-all no. be-all of anything. But. Yeah, so while the locals were happy to drink this newfound concoction, the plantation owners eventually caught on. Like, well, what is this you're drinking now? And they try it, and they're like, oh, that is that is quite good. Oh, and then they, so then they so probably then put the kibosh. So then they started selling it for themselves. Did they still let them have some? I do not know. Probably I not. go beyond that. Yeah. Uh, the term kopi luwak, by the way, comes from the native Indonesian with kopi meaning coffee and luwak meaning Asian palm civet. I thought it was going to be poop. No, it, it no. does not yeah. say poop in it. So what makes the coffee so expensive is the extremely labor intensive process of collecting these beans from these wild Asian tree cats, right? Yeah. You have to go out and find their poop and collect the beans from it. I mean, it's, that's... that's how many beans are you getting per turd? I do not know. It's got to be like yeah. Eight so it, beans it or makes something. sense why you know this unique and expensive coffee has garnered a reputation as a highly sought after luxury good. So I mean, it's Luwak like Luwak is the world's most expensive coffee, though for some it falls under the category of too good to be true. In the Sumatran village where the beans are grown, lives a breed of wild tree cat. These cats eat the beans, digest them, and then defecate. The villagers then collect and process the stools. It is the combination of the beans and the gastric juices of the tree cat that give Kopi Luwak its unique flavor and aroma. You're shitting me. <laughs> Cats beat me to it. <laughs> this Morgan Freeman, he said, the cats beat you to it. Yeah, they You're did. Me, <laughs> so there you have it. Cheers to Coffee Luwak, to be a cool, and coffee in general. Yeah, cheers. I do wish Kip Bird the best of luck. That's really good coffee. It is. What do we got going on next? What's later? <sighs> I don't know. I don't either. I'm going to have to That's figure exciting. that out. On that note, we will see you next week. Take care. <laughs>